Hello everybody, my name is Farhad Hussain Masum. I'm a postdoctoral research associate at the University of Georgia. I did my PhD in the University of Georgia in forestry and natural resources. I did my master's here as well in agricultural and applied economics. Before that, I did another master's in University of Arkansas at Monticello in forest resources. Before that, I was in environmental science program in University of Chittagong. I told you all this because that will be important in your journey of academic writing as well. Because everywhere I was, I had to write something. Uh, and I will try to give you my experience of writing so that you don't make the mistakes I did and you can get some tips what I have accumulated in the past almost 12 years. Before I go into academic writing and tell you almost everything about it, I want to start with two quotes. One by Sir Isaac Asimov. He's not Sir, but Isaac Asimov. He said, writing to me is simply thinking through my fingers. So he, he writes basically because he wants to put his thinking with his fingers. And there is another fantastic quote by Edgar Lawrence Doctoro. He said, writing is an exploration. You start from nothing and learn as you go. So what he is trying to say with that quote is that you don't learn how to write and then start writing. You learn as you go. He has another famous quote, and uh, I think that is related to writing as well, but that is not as much related to academic writing, but it is more related to creative writing or popular writing. Uh, he said, it's like driving a car at night. You never see further than your headlights, but you can make the whole journey or you can make the whole trip that way. So even though you don't know how far you will write, how big it will become, how far you will go, but still you have to start the writing to go where you need it to go. Um, do you know George R. R. Martin? He wrote the books that became the series Game of Thrones. He wrote five books. He was planning to write three. And eventually when he started writing, it became seven book series and he still did not finish the series. We who are trying to read his books, we are still waiting because he never saw further than his headlights, but he is making that trip. Today in this lecture, in this first lecture, I will talk about what is academic writing? Why is it important? How is it different than popular writing or creative writing? What are the types of academic writing? Which type of academic writing do you need at this point in your career? And I will talk about the structure of all of them. And after that, I will debunk some myth about academic writing because trust me, there are a lot of myths related to academic writing. So let's start with what is academic writing? Anything you write in an academic setting is an academic writing. So if you are in a university, if you are in college, if you are in a degree program, everything you write for your degree probably is academic writing. Everything that you write for a science magazine, mostly it's an academic writing. If you are in a master's program or a PhD program, then you have to write thesis and dissertation. Those are academic writing. There are many other types. I will talk about almost all of those today. If you're writing academic books or a book chapter, that is an academic writing. And why is that important? It's important for various purposes. Let's say you are a student and you are in a classroom. It will probably give you an A in that course. And if you are a master's or a PhD student, there will be many courses that you have to take and there will be writing assignments. Uh, the people, the faculty member 
who evaluates those assignments, give you marks, give you grades, they have a certain standard because they went through the whole process. They did their master's, did their PhD, did their undergrad, and now they're faculty members. And they will love you if you can write because, because most students do not really know how to write. And I will talk about the reason why that is, why we are so bad at writing. It can give you a degree. For a master's, you have to write a thesis. There is a non-thesis option for master's, but then you have to take more courses and people who want to get research experience, for them it's better to get the thesis option. So yeah, thesis is an academic writing. If you are in a PhD program, then you have to write a dissertation and there is no excuse. Uh, you don't get a non-dissertation PhD. I even actually wrote a senior thesis for my undergrad paper. So basically when I was in my fourth year or seventh semester of my Bachelor of Science in Environmental Science, then I approached a professor that, hey, I want to do a thesis option. I want to write a project paper. And I was actually very fortunate to get three published papers out of that. Uh, I, will, I will talk about the term papers and uh, I, will, I will explain what I mean because by paper, I don't know, probably some of us still think that I'm talking about newspapers. I am not. By paper, I mean something you write for an academic purpose. You send it to an institution, maybe a journal, maybe a magazine, maybe a book editor. They review it sometimes by reviewers that you don't know. It's called blind review, blind peer review. And then they publish it in their book, in their journal, in their magazine. That what we call a paper. Now, a paper can be of various types. It can be a journal article, book chapters, many other things. I will talk about all of those types. But when you see or when you hear the word paper, uh, it's, it's not newspaper. In the research world, it means that you are a published author. So if you have published it, you are a published author, you are a scientist. You, you cannot believe how amazing it feels to see your name on that piece of paper that you have submitted and you did not publish it. It's not like a Facebook post. Somebody else thought that it's fantastic to publish your article in their journal, in their book. And, and that feeling is amazing. I still remember the first time I got that feeling was in 2010. Oh, wow, I'm old. Uh, in 2010, it was a conference proceedings and, and, it, and it was just heavenly, that feeling. If you have an academic writing, especially research-based academic writing that you published somewhere, that means that you have research experience. It can help you find jobs. If you are currently in Bangladesh doing your undergrad or doing your BBA or law or engineering degree, if you have that research experience, then it's fantastic for you because if you want to come to US for master's or PhD, then the faculty member who will hire you, see, I used the word hire because master's or PhD in America is mostly based on assistantship. If you don't want to pay your own tuition and if you want to get paid for the research you are doing, it's based on assistantship. It's a job. If you help the professor in their research project, then you are a research assistant. There are other types of assistants, but I'm not going to go in there. So if you are trying to go for a research assistantship in that job, obviously it will help you if you have some research experience. And after that, after your degree, after your master's or PhD, it can help you find a regular job. Teaching assistantship is a job, but I don't, I don't call it a regular job because it pays so less. For example, I'm right now a postdoc. Trust me, I'm doing mostly the same thing as my PhD, 
but I'm just getting paid more, which is interesting. Let's say after you finish your PhD program, you, you are done, and then you go into a faculty position. Now you are a teacher. Having academic writing, it helps your career. In fact, it's a must. I'm sure that many of you have heard this phrase uh, in academic world or for academic world, publish or perish. If you don't publish those academic writing, then you will perish or you will just vanish, you will go away. 